If you clicked on this video that means your growth plates are closed. People say that you cannot grow taller after a certain age or after growth plate fusion but that's not entirely true. The thing is you cannot grow taller easily after growth plate fusion but you can grow tall with some dedication. We have a scientific surgery to grow taller even after growth plate fusion known as limb lengthening surgery. It can guarantee height growth up to 5 or more inches. But it's too costly we do not have enough money to get through the surgery. But there's a way. That way is to create microfracture in the bone and heal microfracture in a lengthening position to simulate bone length growth similar to limb lengthening surgery. The process of creating microfracture and healing to grow taller is a long and quite a painful process but if I manage to do it anybody could. Subscribe my channel for useful information for free of cost. We have many different methods to create microfractures jumping, sprinting, basically anything that applies pressure in the shin bone. If it was that easy every sprinter or jumper would be six feet and plus you may ask. We will get into that later. For now you need to have an understanding about how to know if microfracture is created or not. Many people get confused about shin splints and microfracture. The difference between them is that shin splints are pain and irritation you feel along the inner edge of shin bones especially the lower part of the shin bones after exercising vigorously especially on a hard surface. The pain normally resolves after rest. On the other hand, microfracture pain is centered to the zone of the fracture and whenever you run or jump using the leg with the fracture, you feel discomfort until the fracture heals. Usually shin splints are healed within a week or two, but the healing of microfractures will take 5 to 8 weeks. Hope you understood how to differentiate between shin splints and microfracture. Let's see how to create microfracture. For today we will, learn how to properly create microfracture with the help of kicking. If you have ankle weights were that while kicking. If you do not have ankle weights, you need to perform these kicks three times as much to get similar results. And also if these kicks are performed incorrectly you may get injured or not even create microfracture in the right place so pay attention. Many people perform these kicks incorrectly and have a problem in their knee so, the solution I found to get rid of the problem is to try to kick an imaginary ball. Just remember to keep your knee tight to avoid putting more load in that knee. You need to generate force from the end of the foot while keeping your legs straight. Just kick a ball but with a frozen leg if that makes sense. Different people have different bodies so you could play around and figure out what works for you. But for me that method kept minimal pain from my knees and gave me proper stress in the shin bone. I will show you a video example play a closer look. Now for the question why isn't every jumper or kicker not 6 feet or taller? It's simple, remember when I told you you need to create microfracture, and heal them in a lengthening position to grow tall. Yes they train but fail to stretch their legs so they don't grow tall. However a study shows that the length of legs of kickboxer and soccer player legs are on average 2 inches longer than normal humans. Now how much should you train? You should start with 150 kick each legs for a week, then move up to 200 kicks for another week, then decrease the number of kicks while adding ankle weights. Watch my other videos to get more information about these kinds of topics.